the latest monthly employment report showing a stronger than expected increase in non-farm payrolls for the month of April. The unemployment rate dipping to 3.4 percent, the strength of the report uh, causing some speculation that the Fed could keep raising rates uh, for longer. But our next guest says the Fed is done raising and the bar is high for it to continue. Let's bring in Jeremy Siegel, professor emeritus at Finance University, uh, of Finance at University of Pennsylvania's uh, Wharton School of Business. Uh, good to see you again, Professor. There were some revisions from previous months, so it was stronger than expected, <coughs> but definitely we, we, we've seen the average uh, come down to where it's not near, running nearly as hot as it had been. So maybe that's why we saw the markets uh, react that way. The Fed wants to at least... The body language, uh, they want a position that they still might raise. And I understand that. You probably understand it, too. But you don't think they will. Right. Uh, I mean, uh, I think the bar is extremely high. I mean, let me tell you what I think has to happen. Uh, on Wednesday, we, we get a CPI. It has to be much hotter than expected. And I don't mean just one-tenth. I, I mean, you know, two, three-tenths hotter. We need a, a very hot employment report. For the month of May. And then on the first day of that June meeting, we get another CPI, and that has to be much hotter. If those three things happen, which I think are way out of uh, uh, certainly extremely low probability, I mean, not, not impossible, uh, then I think another quarter point might be on the table. But look at all the un certain days with the debt ceiling. I mean, you guys have been talking about it. It is amazing that, you know, the that the Treasury bills, which are considered the safest in the world, that, you know, uh, one month's Treasury bills are five and a half percent or more above the Fed funds rate, which is, uh, you know, between five and five and a quarter. That is a very rare situation. Is that going to be resolved by June? And even if, if they kick it down the road, probably with an extension, that won't be resolved for a period of time. Uh, I think the body language, and I think you're right. I mean, Powell was saying that I'm going to let the forces of the cumulative rise in rates, which is 500 basis points, uh, the, the tightening that we know is coming because of what's going on in central banks, there's not going to be a banking crisis. I'm not worried about that and a deposit flight and all that. I'm worried about tightening of lending standards. That's something that is certainly going to take hold. And I think he's content to, to let that uh, uh, play itself out and see if that does enough to keep slowing the rate of inflation. By the way, one other thing I thought was very interesting. Um, he said, and he said it twice, that he didn't think that wage increases were the principal cause of inflation. Remember, that's something that he had focused on before. I thought that was an interesting statement. Now, that, that's something that I believe in. I think that uh, it's wrong to suppress wages which have fallen behind inflation going forward. But he did make that remark twice in the uh, press conference that followed. So that body language, that statement, uh, the bar is extremely high. So I think, uh, you know, 500 basis points, nice round number, right? Uh, five percentage points. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, they're going to wait a long well, time it's been and a big actually move. start reducing rates later. It's been a big move. So we are here. So, do you, so you think in the face of what we're seeing with yields, I mean, the, the market's completely different than where the Fed is. And that we keep having that argument, who's right, the Fed or the, or the markets. So they're going to stay at five. Do you think they're going to stay there for a while, even though the bond market is, is, is saying you're too high? Or do you think that something happens where they cut sooner than they're planning to? Well, here's the bar for them, the lower rates. you got to have a negative payroll. you got to have a negative payroll. I mean, then one or two negative payrolls. Don't forget, we're, we're, we're getting into political season where everyone's talking about primaries and you know, uh, if we get a negative payroll, that's going to hit headlines. And uh, we listen, the polls have not been great for Biden in terms of his handling of the economy. All you need is a couple of negative payrolls and rises on employment rate and the political pressure on the Fed to say, hey, guys, isn't it you know, time to maybe start notching down that Fed funds rate, um, you know, even if you haven't killed the last vestige of inflation, uh, uh, something that would be needed. And in fact, if if the if if you do see a faltering of 
of the real economy and lowering of that rate, I don't think inflationary pressures are going to be a, a, a major concern for the Fed. So you can have to see negative payrolls. It's not impossible, certainly. Um, uh, that's the that's when the talk will begin on maybe lowering rates and, you know, two or three of those combined. And I think by the fall, we might actually see them notch down rates.